Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the cat's out of the bag for a new DJI drone. A Sling 4 one-week wonder is completed in the UK. NASA astronaut sets a space record. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's September 9th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. It seems like Apple might have started the concept of keeping new high-tech products top secret and then releasing the information in a Hollywood-style extravaganza. Well, if that's what DJI was trying to do with their new drone, their cover has been blown as some images have found their way to the internet. The images of their Mavic drone were first leaked by the drone site Heligai, and then Engadget site posted a couple photos as well. According to the rumor mill, the Mavic will be a foldable 4K flying camera weighing 2.6 pounds. It would appear that the Mavic is aimed directly at buyers who might be considering the GoPro Karma drone to be released this month or the unique breeze that recently hit the market. One of the best selling points of the Mavic is that it can be folded into a compact size for transport and that it's easy to fly. I guess we'll just have to wait for all the details when the final announcement is officially made. And their own version of a one week wonder, a Sling 4 kit built airplane, was built and flown in record time at Sywell Aerodome in the United Kingdom during the 17th anniversary Light Aircraft Association Rally. The Sling line of kit built airplanes are produced by a South African company named the Airplane Factory. A complete Sling 4 aircraft kit was delivered to the Sywell Aerodome on August 26. Over a seven day period, a 10 person build team consisting of five company employees employees and five volunteers fully assembled the kit, Graham ran the engine, and test flew the completed aircraft at the show. The build team worked 12 hours a day at the airplane factory sling display. Back in September 2015, the South African team built a sling for in only four days with 40 workers. This aircraft was delivered to their company representative in the United States. After the break, astronauts' early flight was to help assemble the space station. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. NASA astronaut and Expedition 48 Commander Jeff Williams returned to Earth on Tuesday after his U.S. record-breaking mission aboard the International Space Station. Williams and his two Russian crewmates landed in their Soyuz spacecraft in Kazakhstan. Having completed his fourth mission, Williams has now spent 534 days in space, making him the first all-time NASA astronaut list for being off our planet. Kirk Sherman, ISS Program Manager at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, said that on his first flight in the year 2000, he helped to construct a space station, and his continued flights led to the present day where the focus is science technology development and fostering commercialization. Sherman added, We're incredibly proud of what Jeff has accomplished off the Earth for the Earth. It's Friday, which means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. As we approach the date of 9-11, it's impossible not to reflect on the murderous tragedy that took place in 2001 when evil ran amok. The effect caused by the loss of 3,000 lives is incalculable, but the changes that resulted in aviation continues to live on. Here's this week's barnstorming. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, and hi, folks. Um, we are coming up on yet another one of those anniversaries that sticks in the mind and makes you really consider the life that you live, the things that have happened to this point, and how it's going to shape your life for the future. 
15 years ago this Sunday, on a Tuesday, uh, as I recall, way back when, 15 years ago, the world shook. The world shook because some maniacs, some jerks, some outrageously misguided individuals trying to push their concept of a religion uh, to the forefront of the world's attention for literally no good reason because everything they believed isn't borne out by what the precepts of the religion actually state. Well, they went out and killed thousands of people. They took magnificent pieces of technology, airliners, after spending many months learning to fly and never appreciating the gift that they had in learning as much as they did about aviation, and took those magnificent aircraft filled with innocent people who meant them no harm at all, and they killed them. As a result, the world changed. Uh, aviation, for the first time in history, got grounded, ground stop. I can't imagine what was going through Jane Garvey's mind when she ordered it. I know that it had to be done. I don't question any of the decisions she made. All I know is that I'm glad it was Jane Garvey and not me. It was a horrible set of circumstances. And as a result of all that, a new security apparatus in the TSA was born that has decimated so much of aviation. It's been an embarrassment to this country. It's an embarrassment to the world. And while there's no question that a new level of security is necessary, the goons and the nonsense and the clumsy nature of TSA, well, that's not what I think any of the folks that created it intended. And in fact, some of those who were responsible for the creation of TSA have turned their backs on what has ultimately come out. So 15 years, extraordinary horror, uh, an incredible spectacle. I don't know how many times you see the visions of these beautiful aircraft go speeding along until they terminate their existence in the lives of hundreds of thousands. And, and you can't turn away from it. It's just an extraordinary event. It did what it was intended to do to a certain extent and focus the world on the horrors of hatred, the horrors of terrorism. The problem is in the long run, very little has changed and aviation has to come out of this the better. So far it is not. So until we figure out what that is, I want you to think good thoughts, proud thoughts of the pilots and the crews that fought uh, for control of those aircraft of the innocent passengers who did what they could to stay alive, especially in the case of uh, United Airlines Flight 93, and so many of the other things that surrounded it. It was horrible. It was an act perpetrated by cowards. The world has changed, and as a result, we're changing with it. But let's put some thoughts together as aviators, as members of a proud Aeroverse, an extraordinary community, and see what we can do with the next 15 years to make it better than the 15 that preceded it. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. After these messages, regional cargo carriers offer a scholarship. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. The aviation industry is full of news, and we're summarizing a few of those great other stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Potential cargo pilot candidates can apply for open scholarships from the Regional Air Cargo Carriers Association program. The program is offered to help pilots build time and experience in their complex aircraft. The deadline for applications is October 15th this year. Transportation Safety Board of Canada says we have another case of jet fuel being loaded aboard a piston-powered airplane resulting in an accident in September 2015. 
Both engines started to fail shortly after takeoff, and the occupants sustained very serious injuries in the ensuing forced landing. Datumite, who markets automated field-to-plan solutions, has announced a new tablet app for drone flight planning and automated high-resolution photo shooting. They say the Datufly app saves up to 80% of field surveying time and eliminates follow-up site visits. The General Aviation Manufacturers Association has made some staff changes at its Brussels office. Greg Bowles has been promoted to Vice President of Global Innovation and Policy. Kyle Martin is joining the association as Director of European Regulatory Affairs. And Joel Sambiaz is now Director of Maintenance and Airworthiness. A recent approval from the FAA will potentially save Polk State Aerospace graduates hundreds of flight training hours and thousands of dollars. Depending on the degree earned, flying time to attain an airline transport pilot certificate may be reduced by as much as 500 hours. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. An official of the Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China said in a news conference earlier this week that the company hopes to see the C919 airliner fly by the end of 2016. Reuters reports that the company's deputy head of marketing said that rigorous testing is underway on the airliner, which is the first large-scale civilian aircraft developed in China with international test flight standards. China hopes that the C919 can break into the single-aisle market dominated by Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320 family. There are also plans for a joint venture with Russia to develop a wide-body variant of the airplane, according to the report. The program has been plagued with issues such as lack of experience in building a jetliner to international standards and a shortage of design and engineering expertise in the field. Those challenges and others have forced multiple delays in the C919 program, as well as their ARJ21 regional jet, which made its first revenue flight in June of this year. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying! We'll see you Monday.